you've really got to hand it to short people, because they usually can't reach it anyway. Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 action comedy film called The Fable. Four years prior, the renowned hitman Fable eliminated a band of men part of a syndicate, focusing on abducting women for nocturnal labor. Each takedown was swift and covert until the final target. The offender was driving when Fable struck. His demise inadvertently activated the car's controls. Unknown to Fable, a captive girl, Hinako, was in the rear seat, now ensnared in the runaway car. Averse to bystander injuries, Fable daringly leaped onto the car to save her. Amidst the chaos due to the accelerating vehicle, Fable broke in, grabbed Hinako, and leaped out just as the car plummeted from a parking structure. They crash-landed atop a nearby vehicle. After ensuring Hinako's well-being, Fable disappeared. Presently, Fable no longer takes assassination contracts. His superior deemed him excessively volatile and mandated a cessation to his lethal activities, or face repercussions. Fable now lives incognito as Akira, cohabitating with confident Yoko under the guise of kinship, and is employed at a design firm. Here he collaborates with his supervisor, Takoda, designer Misaki, once a glamour model, and Kainuma, who is fixated on Misaki due to her history, even plastering his room with her portraits. His colleagues remain oblivious to Fable's true persona. Concurrently, Hinako, now wheelchair-bound from the past incident and orphaned, is under the guardianship of Utsubo, the head of a charitable institution. Publicly, Utsubo portrays benevolence towards specially abled individuals, especially the young. Privately, he exploits Hinako. He also fraudulently incriminates kids and extorts their parents under the guise of overseas rehab placements, whereas he really dispatches them and conceals their bodies in a woodland using heavy machinery. Utsubo's crew consists of assassin Suzuki and Kamen Azaki. Although Suzuki doubts Azaki's loyalty, he endures his presence because Utsubo believes Asaki, a former employee of Fable's outfit, may possess crucial intelligence. Eventually, it's revealed that Utsubo was the mastermind behind the illicit enterprise Fable opposed previously, and he craves retribution. One day, Hinako visits a nearby park to attempt the monkey bars, optimistic that it might aid her mobility. Choosing the topmost bar first, she tumbles, an incident witnessed by a passing Fable. He assures her that regaining the ability to walk is feasible with patience and effort. Yet Hinako dismisses him as a peculiar stranger and departs. Arriving home, Fable asks Yoko to recount his mission from four years prior, confirming his hunch. The girl at the park was the very same individual he rescued, leading him to be consumed by guilt over her current condition. The subsequent day, Fable observes Hinako at the park, failing at the bars again, and suggests she initiate with the bottommost bar. Despite this, Hinako still perceives him as an intrusive weirdo and vents about the park's strange man to Suzuki, who vows to confront this intruder. Concurrently, Mutsubo and Isaki airmark Kanoma as their forthcoming scam target, scheming to exploit his infatuation with Misaki. They feign being detectives skilled in detecting surveillance equipment, offering Misaki a supposed service check, when in actuality they plant hidden cameras. Later, during Fable's recurrent park visits, rather than encountering Hinako, he confronts Suzuki who assaults him, instructing him to distance himself from Hinako. Back at work, Takoda assigns Fable a delivery duty for a charity's promotional material, leading him directly to Utsubo's residence. Here, Hinako's recognition prompts an invite inside from Utsubo, careful to conceal his computer laden with Misaki's illicit footage. Hearing Fable's sincere wish to aid Hinako's recovery, Utsubo anticipates potential future collaborations, while Hinako's initial discomfort with Fable melts upon realizing his social ineptitude. Once home, Fable informs Yoko of his encounter with Utsubo, a past target whose elimination was called off. He contemplates completing the task now, but Yoko counsels against it. The next day, Hinako revisits the park, heeding Fable's advice, successfully utilizing the lowest bar, enabling her to stand unassisted. Elated, she wishes Fable could witness her triumph. Unbeknownst to her, Fable watches discreetly from behind foliage, eager to avoid any further misunderstandings. 
In the next sequence, Gutsubo masquerades as a detective, and Isaki acts as Misaki's agent, executing their next phase. They remain oblivious to Hinako's presence, who has returned from her park visit, and eavesdrops from the corridor. Their ploy involves accusing Kainuma, in front of his mother, of setting up surveillance in Misaki's residence, using their clandestinely captured footage as evidence. While Kainuma refutes these claims, his mother, familiar with his tendencies, is convinced, and agrees to a financial settlement to avoid public litigation. That evening, in a fit of rage, Kainuma vents his frustration by slashing his Misaki photos, erroneously presuming she betrayed him. At work the following day, the mere sight of Misaki pushes Kainuma over the edge. He lunges at her, but is promptly neutralized by Fable. To shield Misaki from distress, Fable feigns that Kainuma's aggression was aimed at him. As the two converse, Kainuma regains consciousness and flees. In his pursuit, Fable encounters Suzuki, spiriting away Kainuma in a van. Alerted by Suzuki of Fable's interference, Utsubo instructs Suzuki to neutralize the potential threat. Hinako, who overhears, grows concerned. Shortly, Suzuki transfers custody of Kainuma to Visaki to personally confront Fable. The latter warns Suzuki to return Kainuma, unharmed within a day or face repercussions, leaving Suzuki pondering Fable's true identity. Subsequently, Suzuki instructs Izaki to extract Fable's location from Kainuma. However, a pit stop by Izaki allows Kainuma an escape opportunity. As Izaki hastily resumes driving, unaware that Kainuma was behind the van, he unintentionally kills him. Concurrently, Suzuki, now at Fable's residence, identifies hallmarks of a covert agency. He confronts Yoko, seeking validation of Fable's true identity. Unbeknownst to him, Yoko isn't a mere bystander, and skillfully incapacitates him before her dinner overcooks. Upon Fable's return, he confronts a restrained Suzuki, demanding Kainuma's release. Learning of Kainuma's demise, a defeated Fable releases Suzuki, significantly denting Suzuki's ego. Following Izaki's execution for his blunder, Suzuki informs Utsubo that he's unearthed the mythic Fable's whereabouts. Suzuki remains skeptical about Utsubo's capability to confront Fable and seeks a solid justification for another assault. Utsubo spins a fabricated tale that the man driving Hinako four years prior was his sibling whose death has deeply affected him ever since. Crafting this poignant narrative, he persuades Suzuki, who commits to aiding Utsubo in Fable's assassination, contingent on a foolproof strategy. Hinako, from her room, overhears this entire exchange. The next day, during her park visit, as Hinako falters on the bars, Fable steps in to assist with a leg massage. Her curiosity about his past intensifies, but this moment is disrupted by a gunshot, resulting in Fable's apparent demise. However, Hinako soon realizes it's a nightmare. At a subsequent dinner, Hinako confronts Otsubo about his malicious intentions towards Fable, emphasizing his positive influence on her. To manipulate her sentiments, Utsubo falsely claims that Fable was responsible for the deaths of both the man in her past car incident and her parents, providing intricate details as evidence of his thorough research. Come morning, Hinako requests a firearm, to which Utsubo hands over an unloaded one, assuring ammunition upon her acclimatization to the weapon. Later, Utsubo invites Fable over for a chat regarding Hinako's well-being. Despite Yoko's caution of an evident ambush, Fable, driven by remorse, decides to face Utsubo, with Yoko offering support. Upon reaching Utsubo's residence, Fable instantly discerns a concealed grenade behind the entrance. In a split-second decision, he leaps onto an adjacent balcony, narrowly escaping an explosion. Observing from a distance, Suzuki dispatches a team, inclusive of a sharpshooter and multiple hitmen, stationed on scaffolds. As Fable maneuvers through various apartments, incapacitating foes in his path, he attempts a swift escape by scaling the external walls, easily fending off adversaries. However, a subsequent phone alert notifies him of an explosive device planted near a hearing-impaired girl on the 10th floor. Driven by his moral compass, Fable scales the scaffolds to her aid, 
When confronted, he employs a unique firearm crafted by Yoko, which discharges non-lethal rounds, effectively neutralizing threats without inflicting fatal harm. Simultaneously, Yoko pursues the sniper while the hearing-impaired child steps onto her balcony, lured by a drifting balloon. As Fable reaches a balcony, he is besieged by numerous adversaries. Engaging them, he dynamically maneuvers in and around the scaffolding, keeping them at bay while aiming for the 10th floor. The sniper, unable to take a shot due to the child's presence, becomes vulnerable, allowing Yoko to incapacitate him. However, Fable's prolonged skirmish with an interior foe enables more assailants to approach. In a desperate move, Fable hurls a grenade towards the scaffolding, dislodging it and leaving his pursuers dangling. Racing to save the child, Fable reaches her, only to find the bomb threat was a decoy. Spotting Suzuki's retreat, he communicates the vehicle details to Yoko for pursuit while pausing for sustenance and arranging transportation via agency colleagues. Shortly after, Yoko is lured into a wooded area where Suzuki ensnares her with a fox grenade threat. Present are both Utsubo and Hinako. After binding Yoko to a tree, Utsubo hands Hinako ammunition, urging her to practice on Yoko. In a twist, Hinako targets Utsubo. However, he's unharmed due to concealed body armor. Hinako confronts him, deducing his involvement in her parents' murder based on the intimate crime details he revealed. Utsubo confesses, revealing her parents' knowledge of his illicit activities compelled him to act. Distraught, Hinako's ensuing shots go astray. Yet provoked by Utsubo's taunts, she forces herself upright, attempting to approach him. Her progress is abruptly halted by Suzuki's alert about a concealed landmine beneath her. Any movement risks detonation. With her last bullet, Hinako fires, propelling herself backward. Miraculously, Fable appears in the nick of time, catching her and averting the mine's activation. The climax intensifies as Utsubo releases a grenade. Reactively, Fable shoots, disrupting Utsubo's trajectory, then shields Hinako from the impending explosion. Pleadingly, Fable seeks Suzuki's assistance, recognizing a mutual professional code between them. Suzuki agrees to assist. After releasing Yoko to monitor Utsubo, he operates the excavator to address the landmine threat. This intervention enables Fable to swiftly move Hinako to safety, with the excavator's bucket effectively containing the blast, ensuring their protection. In a last-ditch effort, Utsubo hurls a grenade at the duo. Suzuki's reflexes kick in, and he fatally shoots Utsubo. Surprisingly, the grenade remains inert, revealing Utsubo never triggered it. He seemingly sought a lethal response to end his own plight. Post this confrontation, Utsubo's body is interred using the excavator. As Fable and Yoko prepare to depart, Hinako, with considerable effort, manages to shuffle towards Fable, embracing him in gratitude. Several days later, on Christmas Eve, Fable receives a letter from Hinako, with explicit instructions to incinerate it post-reading. The letter recounts Hinako's past. Four years prior, a familial conflict with her sheltering parents led her to flee, making her susceptible to abduction. She harbored no resentment towards Fable, crediting him for rescuing her from a grim fate. Now immersed in intensive physical therapy, Hinako anticipates reuniting with Fable in the summer, once she regains her ability to walk. As the letter is consumed by flames, Fable 2 harbors hopes of a future reunion. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.